Thank you. Good afternoon. It is indeed my pleasure today to uh, present you our uh, VLIS research framework. As uh, Professor Mace uh, introduced a uh, new activity uh, for VLIS and also a novelty in the, in the Belgian and Flemish marine research landscape. I'll start uh, by talking you through what VLIS, Flanders Marine Institute, can do for you. Uh, you are today all present here at this uh, VLIS Marine Science Day, so that's at least one thing you know that VLIS can do for you, is bringing people together uh, and letting them interact and present the new things in marine science in Flanders and Belgium. But there's a lot more things that, that VLIS can do for you and that some of you may have experienced in the, in the past years. Uh, remember the elevated pitch presentations of uh, before the, the lunch break and the, the nice demos and, and posters that you could see uh, next doors. Uh, we have a, a marine library uh, with an, an impressive amount of uh, documents that can be accessed and then uh, fast response time. We have the uh, compendium for coast and sea, of which a new edition is expected at the end of this year, but of which the current edition is also a very valuable source for marine scientists, uh, uh, not only to get an overview of the, the Belgian marine research landscape, also to have a look at the funding opportunities there are for marine science, and for instance, to have an idea of the marine research infrastructure that is available in Belgium. VLIS manages uh, research infrastructure. Our uh, RV uh, Simon Steven is uh, the probably the, the best known uh, aspect of the infrastructure, but there's a whole range of uh, equipment, uh, sea going and also in the marine station, that is at the service of marine scientists in Flanders. We communicate about marine science, uh, Bart has uh, introduced it this morning, there's uh, social media, there's, there's a website. Uh, we have this uh, knock knock who's there, where we track the presence of uh, um, marine mammals, uh, but also of uh, fish with an acoustic receiver network, and we, we are part of this uh, life watch uh, research infrastructure, where we um, where we uh, have a whole observatory collecting data, which is at the service of marine scientists, and that uh, you could you can win a prize with today of uh, checking how you can explore all this data. Uh, there is a scout monitor, a wealth of data on the scout estuary. Uh, we have uh, very specialized equipment uh, for, of which data are also available. Uh, the zoo is kind of something you can test next doors. Um, there's this uh, philanthropy uh, activity uh, of which uh, you can also benefit as a marine scientist. If you have a brilliant marine research idea, you can get a grant to make it happen. And you will see presentations of the winners of last year uh, in the later afternoon. And uh, VLIS uh, supports some larger data structures uh, like EmotNet and Worms that have been introduced in this uh, this one, one, of the, one of the strengths uh, that VLIS is known for with a lot of marine scientists in Flanders is its, uh, its data management activities and its data services. The, the Marine Data Archive is a, a, a repository for all marine scientists in Flanders, where you can safely store your uh, research data and know that they are properly annotated with the correct metadata and that they will be uh, safeguarded. We have the integrated marine information system, uh, documenting persons active in marine science, institutes, publications, maps, projects, and data sets. And we have this underway uh, data system tracking all the data that our research vessel is collecting on its cruises. Next to LifeWatch, we are also engaged in two other large European uh, research infrastructures from the S3 program, uh, the uh, European Strategy for uh, Research Infrastructures. The first one is called ICOS, the Integrated Carbon Observation System, where VLIS takes carbon measurements at a measurement buoy in the North Sea and also at the cruises of the, the Simon Steven research vessel. You can see more details here and also use the data that are uh, created by this infrastructure if you go to the, to the carbon portal of ICOS. And we are a member of the European Marine Biological Resource Center. 
where we provide access to uh, facilities and equipment, such as, such as our video plankton recorder depicted here, and also we provide access to uh, biological resources uh, by uh, um, giving the possibility of people to go into our development park remotely to collect samples. So also, if you uh, want to make use of that, you can go to this website and make this happen. So there's a, a lot of things uh, this can do for you. We communicate to the wide audience uh, interested in marine sciences through our, uh, our paper magazine, uh, De Grote Reden. We have an, uh, an electronic newsletter, Vliesine, uh, which I highly recommend if you haven't done so to, to subscribe by going to this, uh, this website. And we also uh, stimulate science communication by awarding uh, science communication awards. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of the, the winner of uh, two years ago, who made a, a, a movie about eel migration. And you will see something more of the winner of, uh, of uh, this year, uh, later this, uh, this day. So, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of uh, services that Vlis can provide uh, to marine scientists throughout Flanders. Um, now there's a something new. Vlis will now also act as marine scientists in Flanders, as one of these marine research groups. And this is what Vlis research is about, and uh, which we uh, documented in a, a Vlis research framework that uh, came out this January and that is available on our website. So, just to, to stress that the, the activities that I just described, and there's more of them, that started since the initiation of our institute in 1999 to facilitate and support research, they continue as of today. So, this has not changed. But, since last year, our mandate has expanded. There's a, there's a layer on top of that, and that's twofold. The first part is that VLIS now also performs and initiates research itself. And it wants to do that, we want to do this in a collaborative way. And the second part is that we uh, formally establish a link between the marine scientific community and the blue economy. I will today focus in this talk on the, this first extra mandate uh, on the, uh, the research at FLIS. So, this is a part of the, of the Compendium for Coast and Sea, and the overview of Belgian marine research groups. Please is in there, but we will need an update in the next version 2018, because we are now also in a more active uh, marine research groups, where we can initiate and perform this research ourselves. And that is detailed in the, the research framework. What is this research framework? It describes the research themes that Bliss wants to actively pursue. And this uh, scheme represents how we want to do this. Uh, we want to valorize the strengths that are present at VLIS by collaborating with all the, the divisions within VLIS and uh, make sure that these, uh, this strong legacy of, of uh, data and infrastructure mainly are uh, used in our research. But we want to uh, collaborate closely with marine research groups and also um, create an extra way of valorizing the strengths and the capacities that are present in this uh, very strong uh, marine scientific field uh, in Flanders and Belgium, which is internationally uh, renowned. We have a new uh, team uh, in Bliss to make this, uh, this research task happen. Um, all people are uh, present here today, so uh, feel free to talk to them during coffee breaks and, and during the poster session. Uh, there's myself uh, here in the center, the research director. And then we have an uh, infrastructure science manager, Maarten de Rijke, and a data science manager, uh, Gert Eberhardt. Uh, their functions stress that we want to really valorize the strong infrastructure and data capacities that are already present at, uh, at FLIS. And then we have a senior science officer, uh, Pascal Hambulso, and a senior researcher, Tine Missian. And two project uh, researchers whom you have seen presenting uh, this morning, Wim de Winter and Josh Westmeyer. So there's a lot of uh, adults there, meaning that we interact as a team and we want to uh, make the, the science in this 
a multidisciplinary science and also by involving uh, with the, the other marine research groups make uh, things happen, uh, collaborative projects happen that would not happen without the, the bliss research being there. This uh, demonstrates how we got to the, to the establishment of our uh, research agenda. So it has been a process of uh, um, almost a year uh, where we started uh, in March uh, 2017 uh, presenting a process note to our scientific board. And then we developed the framework with some iterations, presenting it backwards and forwards to the scientific board and our board of directors, coming to an approval in uh, December 2017 and a publication in uh, January 2018. And the research framework uh, gives uh, the large themes that we want to pursue, that we want to do research in. And this will be detailed annually in uh, yearly work plans uh, that are then uh, presented every time to, uh, to uh, designate which project that we are going to be tackling in the coming year. And there has been a lot of interaction with the marine scientific community uh, through the, their representation in the scientific board in drafting this uh, research framework. And what uh, did we take into account in this uh, development phase uh, in, in uh, mainly uh, last summer? Uh, we, we always took into account these, these two strengths of uh, data and infrastructure that are present at FLIS. And we also took into account some uh, international key policy documents and, and marine science policy uh, being this Navigating the Future 4 that Angel referred to this morning, the JPI Oceans um, uh, Science uh, Strategy, but also the, uh, the, uh, the compendium of coastal sea is something that we took in hand uh, to see the, the, the current strengths and the current um, fields that marine Belgian research groups are active. So before I go to this, uh, to our own uh, VLIS uh, research framework, I tell you something about this update of navigating the future. Uh, the document navigating the future for it is still very relevant. We had a lot, we got a lot of inspiration from it. But as Angel uh, indicated this morning, uh, an update is uh, on its way, and there has been a foresight workshop uh, last November. Uh, where experts from all the Marine Board uh, members uh, uh, were uh, convened in Brussels to uh, brainstorm and to think of some uh, large overarching themes that uh, would be worth or that need to be uh, investigated in marine research in the, in the coming years. And there's, there's uh, four large themes that came out of there. The first one is uh, the four-dimensional ocean related to the wider earth and climate system, where the fourth dimension is the changes in, in the time. There's a theme on the, the uh, impacts of uh, multiple human stressors on uh, the ocean and how we can assess these. And uh, a theme on uh, understanding and predicting uh, extreme events and how we can improve this, uh, these predictabilities. There's a uh, um, ocean technologies that come in the, into the picture with uh, information technology and artificial intelligence having to play a role with a large amount of data that uh, will arise from these technologies. And then finally, they want to integrate sustainability science uh, within uh, marine science as a, as a science field of its own. So this brings me to the, the overview of our research framework at FLIS. Uh, it is centered uh, at some research themes, and there's uh, several drivers uh, that make us do our research. You can see at top the society and the blue economy. We want to do research that is relevant to society, and we also explicitly want to uh, uh, capture scientific questions from the, uh, the blue economy community. But there is also curiosity, and we want to be able to perform this uh, uh, fundamental curiosity-driven science at the same time, so it comes from both sides. The first uh, large theme uh, uh, deals with ocean services in the changing ocean. So how the uh, sea uh, and the ocean provide services, ecosystem services, and how these are affected by drivers of change, uh, often anthropogenic drivers of change. Um, the second theme uh, related to that, the changing ocean, is uh, ocean past, where we want to understand how the, the, the sea and the ocean 
evolved from the past to now and which processes uh, took, past, uh, took place in, in this past. The third team is supporting other teams is on uh, how to improve uh, ocean observation, how we can uh, perform research to improve ocean observation and through this ocean observation provide data that feed into the other teams. And the fourth uh, team is uh, on the link between the sea and the ocean and human health. And you will notice that I use the word, uh, or that we chose to use the word ocean here everywhere. That is because we as LIS are strong advocates of ocean literacy, uh, the, the concept of one global ocean, everything is connected. Um, being located here at the, at the seaside in Ostend, uh, the focus of our uh, measurements and our experiments will be on the, the southern bight and more specifically the Belgian part of the North Sea. However, we want to be able to do research that is relevant for the, the, the global ocean and also to perform experiments that mimic other uh, environments. Then there's a team on the policy-driven and responsive mode research where we want to be able to uh, respond to policy questions or other opportunities that arise and a team on blue sky research. I will walk you through all these teams in the coming slides. And the research at FLIS will be supported by some enabling platforms uh, that you can see listed here. I will also come back to this. And these platforms uh, support, uh, to a lesser or greater extent, on this uh, S3 uh, the research infrastructures that FLIS is engaged in, being the ENVRC, IPAS, and LightWatch. And connected to that, we also want to uh, build or, or further expand uh, centers of excellence uh, that serve the research at VLIS. But those enabling platforms and those centers of excellence, they will not only serve the research at VLIS, but will also be there for you as uh, marine scientists in Flanders and Belgium to uh, help you do your research. So in the next slides, I will give you an, uh, an overview, uh, team by team, on the content of those, uh, those research teams. And I start with ocean services in a changing ocean. There we want to, uh, first of all, uh, gather relevant data to get insight in these, uh, in these uh, ecosystem services that the, that the sea brings. And this can be done through uh, data archaeology, uh, where we, uh, we uh, go to ancient data and make this, uh, transform this into useful information. We will go out uh, sampling uh, for different parameters, uh, also including uh, citizen science. And we want to um, uh, build a reference biodiversity data set, including an, an image bank to, get an, to, to uh, create an, an, a snapshot or a, a time snapshot as a reference for future, uh, future changes. Uh, these data uh, that we have gathered will feed into, into models uh, that uh, make us better understand the uh, services that the, the marine ecosystem uh, can provide. Uh, examples of those services are um, biomass production, uh, energy transfer, carbon and nutrient cycling, uh, oxygen uptake, and, and, um, uh, and there's more. And with this, we also want to uh, investigate the potential drivers of change, uh, the stressors that may affect uh, these ocean services. An example uh, of a project that we are going to start uh, in 2018 and is related to, to these activities is uh, what we call uh, BIRMS 2020, an, uh, an innovative census of Belgian marine biodiversity uh, and where we want to perform collaborative research, also on the ecological functions of marine life. BIRMS is the, Bel the Belgian Registry of Marine Species, so a subsection of, of worms that have been described this morning. And we want to, to uh, make an update of this Belgian register, and I'll also put a timestamp on it, so that we can have this reference biodiversity data set uh, at the, in the period 2010-2020. We will start by uh, looking at uh, the known registers and uh, contacting marine research groups for data that there are. And then we will uh, see where we uh, will do extra uh, data gathering activities, go uh, or dedicate sampling to get information on, on biodiversity and apply also novel techniques 
such as the the, uh, the visualization uh, with uh, zoom scanners and uh, and so forth and also uh, we want to uh, use uh, now the, the, the advances in the gen genetic techniques and meta barcoding to um, grasp uh, the biodiversity of Belgian marine life in a way that maybe was not uh, as easy to do uh, when the first edition of BERS had been performed. In this framework, uh, I already invite you to say the date on the 23rd of May uh, 2018, we will organize a Bliss Science Symposium on uh, biodiversity research. Uh, we want to have some speakers on the taxonomy, on the relation between biodiversity and ecological function, genetic methods and novel identification tools. And uh, Professor uh, Frederik de Lange from University of Namur has already confirmed a keynote on the relation between biodiversity and uh, ecological function. And the idea of this Bliss Science Symposium is that we bring together uh, multidisciplinary uh, scientists uh, related to uh, one of the themes in our research agenda and uh, present their work and uh, start discussions for future collaborations. Some small, smaller projects that have been initiated are <coughs> the uh, reconstruction of historical uh, herring catch data and to see how we can uh, link evolutions in this herring catch to abiotic variables. Uh, and then we are exploring to look at uh, 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 recreational uh, catch and effort data from uh, near shore uh, towing uh, fishing. And we, we are looking at historical, uh, seeing if we can explore historical wind data from the West Hinder uh, lightship to see if we can relate this to uh, sea levels. In the second part of this first theme on ocean services in the changing ocean, we also want to perform uh, experiments uh, in the laboratory uh, to test some hypotheses on uh, impacts of certain uh, stressors on the, on the ocean services uh, and to validate or refine some of the models that we are going to use. Uh, and in a, in a later instance, also uh, take into account uh, future climate change, so extra uh, scenarios with these abiotic variables um, to make uh, predictions to the future uh, possible. And in the last sub-theme that is described in our research framework, we want to perform uh, ecosystem research for the blue economy, where we want to, to do uh, laboratory, but also larger scale experiments. So this is an image of the, the coastal and ocean basin that uh, is uh, in the, the Greenbridge facility in Ostend, where we might uh, perform experiments related to uh, constructions uh, built with nature. This is an example of the Dutch uh, sand uh, motor, uh, but there's uh, many other ways. Uh, there's also some uh, uh, speakers this morning that referred to uh, ways of coastal defense uh, that use uh, natural systems and where we think that our uh, understanding of ecosystem services can be an added value uh, to, uh, to uh, make good uh, designs there. And we also want to take into account the socio-economic aspects of this, uh, this uh, type of constructions. So that brings me to the, the second uh, theme, uh, which is ocean past. And the first sub-theme there is paleo landscapes, uh, where we want to uh, investigate the prehistoric uh, landscapes that are beneath the surface of the Belgian part of the North Sea and the adjacent uh, parts of the channel, the Southern North Sea. Uh, reconstruct those landscapes in order to better understand the situation of today and potential evolutions uh, in the future. Uh, examples of uh, ongoing projects are the uh, investigations to the, the, the paleo landscape at the, the Scheur site near Zeebrugge, uh, where we uh, performed some uh, sampling and uh, we, we discovered some, some fossils uh, that had already been discovered by Dutch fishermen. But we are now collaborating with the University of Ghent, with the Royal Belgian Inst Institute of Natural Sciences and with the Natural History Museum of Rotterdam to bring together uh, different types of data from um, paleontologists and also from uh, geophysical uh, information to uh, uh, gain understanding on when and how the apparently large number of walruses that once lived there uh, could survive in that environment. Another uh, example of a project is the uh, investigation of 
uh, special uh, ridge formations uh, in the, the Dover Straits, where the uh, a cruise with the Simon Steven uh, went there last month and uh, discovered some uh, interesting features potentially relating to a, a massive uh, flooding event uh, after the, uh, the uh, last glacial maximum. And uh, next month, uh, a cruise is planned with the, with the Belgica to the, the more central southern part of the North Sea uh, in collaboration with the University of uh, Bradford and TMA in the Netherlands, also together with Ghent University, as was this uh, cruise, to investigate the, the paleo landscape formation there and whether or not it could be linked to a, a large pro glacial lake or a, or a river end system over there. The second sub theme in Ocean Paths is in marine and maritime archaeology and underwater cultural heritage, where we want to investigate. Uh, remainings of uh, past human settlements uh, and uh, underwater heritage, such, such as this uh, shipwreck, uh, to, to better understand uh, human history in the, in, the, in the Belgian part of the North Sea. And then the, and the last uh, sub theme is maritime historical research, uh, where we want to engage a lot of uh, Flemish research groups that uh, do not know yet that there may also be marine research groups, uh, especially from, from the Alpha Sciences, and where the, the project on the prize papers is a, is a very good start, uh, bringing together people from, uh, from uh, all Flemish uh, universities and other knowledge institutions, and uh, providing a wealth of information, uh, giving different angles of historical research that uh, gave us information on uh, the sea as it was, but also on how the seafarers interacted with the sea. And uh, this, is, uh, this is where we want to go to. The focus there is either it will be Flemish seafarers or it will be historical research related to the, the Belgian part of the North Sea or harbors. Next big theme is uh, ocean observation, uh, where we want to um, uh, build and, and improve a sensor network, uh, starting from what we now have, uh, for instance, a methane sensor in the, the, the sea ports for uh, acoustic uh, uh, measurements of, of marine mammals. We also want to uh, make more use of remote sensing data for, uh, for marine science. Uh, we want to do this, uh, of course, in collaboration uh, as all the research with the relevant specialists uh, that are there today in the in, uh, in Flanders, uh, for instance, Vito has uh, demonstrated this morning that uh, Slovak Institute is there. And we are very happy to announce that uh, we will be receiving a, a guest, a professor from the University of Connecticut, uh, spending a sabbatical uh, at uh, Vlis uh, starting this summer for one year. So there will be a lot of opportunities for collaborations in that field there. And then in, uh, uh, we want to improve acoustic uh, measurements. Uh, for instance, in the context of uh, uh, shallow gas in the, in the, in the near shore sediments, uh, there is uh, special techniques with which you can circumvent the interference that this gas gives with uh, classical uh, acoustic uh, measurements. And then there's the, the visual um, ocean observation aspects that we want to improve. We have a lot of uh, high-tech uh, equipment there. Uh, the challenge there is more to make uh, use of the data and get, uh, get uh, good information of the images in a more automated way uh, to, to be able to uh, be more useful for research. And then the, the robotics, uh, you have seen the, the demo in the, in the poster corner, uh, we're going to expand the robotics lab and we also want to perform some research on improving this, these robotics by uh, making new links with, with sensors and by uh, seeing if we can, we can uh, optimize navigation, minion polarization, or uh, work on the autonomous capacity of those devices. The last large uh, theme is on the, the relationship between the ocean and human health, uh, where we, uh, in the first sub-theme, want to investigate the, uh, the uh, epidemi epidemiological aspects of the uh, uh, positive and potential negative uh, impact of the proximity of the sea to uh, human beings at a psychological, physiological, but also, also a social economic uh, scale. And there's the blue gym hypothesis saying that it is healthy for you to be close to the ocean, 
and we want to investigate this uh, in Belgium. And we also think that this is a very good project to uh, engage with a lot of uh, research groups in Flanders uh, that are not yet uh, aware of the possibilities in this field of marine research. The second sub team, uh, in collaboration with Ghent University, uh, we uh, engage in the, the research on the sea spray aerosols, which uh, by inhalating uh, can uh, also have an, uh, an impact on human health. And we've done some uh, experiments this summer with um, um, a, uh, a, a sea spray uh, a generating reference tank and analyzing the filters. And we recently also um, um, made an uh, air sampling device operational so that we can get an, an idea of the um, occurrence of sea spray aerosols and their contents and how they evolve through time at the Belgian coast. And our last sub team within the ocean and human health team is on harmful algal blooms, uh, where we want to study. Uh, improvement of detection methods on both uh, living cells and, and uh, or, or active cells and, and resting cysts of certain uh, harmful algal species um, by uh, using uh, imaging but also uh, molecular and, and uh, chemical toxin analysis methods uh, perform some experiments to give more insights in how harmful algal blooms may uh, be originating and occurring at the Belgian coast and, uh, see if we can improve the, the modeling of the risks of uh, harmful algal blooms at, uh, in our uh, Belgian marine waters. And in this respect, we are also observing uh, the uh, intergovernmental um, um, panel on uh, harmful algal blooms at the IOC. And then the, the last two uh, themes are a bit aside from the rest. And there's a, a policy-driven and responsive mode research, where we want to, uh, on one hand, focus on uh, supporting Flemish policy priorities uh, by expanding a broad scientific knowledge base, so not by uh, doing really very specific uh, policy supporting actions uh, such as the fish stock assessment that Ergo is, is, uh, is of course very specialized in. And an example here is that we gathered a lot of um, uh, researchers and research groups in Flanders to prepare a collaborative project on expanding the scientific knowledge related to the, the Paardenmarkt munition, munition dump site near Knuggeheist. And secondly, within this team, we also want to be able to engage in international Flemish engagement and international science policy, so uh, to respond to calls from Joint High Oceans, for example. And we are uh, tightening our bonds with uh, our colleague uh, institute from the Netherlands, NEOS. And finally, uh, within this team, we want to uh, give an opportunity for people with bright and dazzling research ideas related to the ocean to come to us and to make these ideas uh, happen through collaborative research projects. So uh, if you have such a bright and dazzling idea, always welcome to talk to me or one of my colleagues. And the last uh, theme then uh, that I will touch upon is blue sky research, where we want to uh, be able to perform really high risk blue sky research uh, that would otherwise not be uh, very easy to get started, for instance, related to uh, exo-oceans on, on other planets and, or the origin of life. And what also is there is uh, untargeted data mining and a really big data analysis on, on uh, data sets that are uh, opportunistically available uh, and from which new transit patterns could, uh, could be derived. So uh, a few words on uh, research uh, implementation. Uh, so the, the, the platforms and the centers of excellence will be, will be mentioned here. And the, uh, the interaction, uh, I keep stressing it, between BLIS, the strengths of BLIS, and the marine research groups uh, is key in the, in the implementation of our research framework. Uh, to, to demonstrate that, there are three possible roles uh, for BLIS in how we do uh, research projects. If it's data or infrastructure driven research, we can initiate leader to form this research and we will collaborate with other research groups whenever relevant and possible. If uh, it's uh, concerning research outside the active field of another marine research group, uh, which we can continuously check in the yearly updated compendium, uh, we can initiate, lead and perform this complementary research and we will seek collaboration with other research groups. And if you detect research needs 
in the fields of active marine research groups who will <coughs> stimulate the initiation of this research, go and talk to these people, promote collaboration, and when relevant and possible, uh, and we're invited, we'll be happy to take part in, the, in this collaboration. The research enabling platforms, uh, I've mentioned most of them, uh, the, the sea going platform, the same saving, but there's also the, the ZCAT, uh, the fixed platforms, uh, the measuring buoy and the, the fixed sensors. There's the marine station uh, in Ostend, our, uh, our uh, land-based facilities, uh, which will be expanded uh, in the coming years. Uh, so that's uh, very good news also for you as a marine scientist. If you want to come and do an experiment really close to the sea, uh, you, can, you can join us at the marine station. Uh, we want to use omics uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a platform and build up our knowledge in omics uh, fed by, by the recent projects we do and we want to, to uh, um, similar way uh, expand our, our modeling knowledge and use models as a tool for a lot of other research. Um, a second uh, slide on enabling platforms is uh, citizen science. Uh, Angel already referred to the, to the EMB policy brief. Uh, and uh, you and all the people that you know actually uh, could also be engaged in our citizen science project uh, Sea Watch B, uh, where uh, volunteers uh, are uh, on a regular basis going to the, the, the beach and, and uh, taking uh, stock of some uh, variables that can tell us something on the, on the state of the sea. And the last uh, research enabling platform that maybe is a little less known uh, to you, but uh, which can also be uh, very useful so for some aspects of research, is our scientific diving team. Uh, we are currently uh, seven divers in our team, uh, fully equipped uh, and able to do uh, diving uh, activities in the North Sea for various purposes. So next to these enabling platforms, uh, which are there and uh, of which we want to make use for our research, we also have our centers of excellence that we see as interdisciplinary hubs where we, where we really aim to be at the forefront uh, uh, in Belgium and in Europe at a longer scale to have an extra asset for VLIS and for the marine research uh, community. Uh, there's the data center uh, with all the data um, products, data systems that have been described and that you can see demonstrated there. Um, there's our marine imaging and visualization center. There's a, a lot of uh, devices that have been described. Uh, we recently also have a scanning electron microscope that uh, has been operational since a couple of weeks. It's also our acoustics uh, are within there. And uh, we also uh, are building up a um, multi-environment marine experiment center uh, where we now have already some fish tanks uh, that can be accommodated, uh, some of you may have already used in the marine station and we will build a master plan to, uh, to make this into a, a more multifunctional uh, experimental center. And then the, the, the last uh, center of excellence is the marine robotic center. Uh, some extra words there because it's really a, a big change uh, from uh, our ROV that you can admire uh, next doors. Uh, we will uh, uh, acquire in the course of, of, uh, of the, this year an, uh, an autonomous underwater vehicle and an unmanned surface vehicle. Uh, these images are just examples of suitable devices as the tendering process is, is ongoing. Uh, we will be quite unique in there with, a, with an AOV that will be 1000 meter depth graded with a lot of sensor capabilities so we will be somewhere uh, in between the, the smaller uh, AOV and then the really uh, large works. Um, of course, we don't dream of the fleet that uh, NOC has, but uh, within the Flemish context, and uh, I discussed with Vera this morning, if you would uh, relate it to the, the size of our coast, we can be quite proud already of, uh, of this future marine robotics center. So to conclude in this part, uh, the change is here that VLIS will now become a more active research partner, uh, engaging proactively in some research, within the framework I just described. And we think this is a, a leverage to promote accumulation of marine knowledge and excellence in the entire marine research landscape of Flanders. I want, want to do this as much as possible together with, sorry, with all of you. So uh, do come and talk to us if you have uh, ideas uh, in that direction. We will do the same. <laughs> and as, as uh, Jan uh, announced, I will now uh, finish this talk uh, 
by going to another kind of uh, research framework, uh, the, the Flemish uh, science agenda. Um, I first refer to the, the Dutch example. In the Netherlands, uh, the, the last uh, two years, they, they uh, created a Dutch national research agenda. This was what they call a unique bottom-up initiative, uh, where they uh, put questionnaires to the, the general public and to some stakeholders, uh, amongst which scientists, and they collected 11,700 questions uh, on what science should, should be uh, looking at into, in, the, in the coming years. And they then translated it into uh, 140 overarching scientific questions. And they have been uh, put together in 25 so-called rules on how you can go from those questions to answers. And interestingly, in the Netherlands, there is something as the, the blue route, uh, where they are going through all the things related to water, uh, from fresh water, but also to brackets, and there's a, there's a large marine chunk there. Uh, so creating a lot of opportunities for marine scientists in the coming years in the Netherlands. What is the, the Flemish approach? In Flanders, uh, the, the FWO, so the Flemish Science Foundation, will uh, in, in the next month launch the process for uh, what is called the Vlaamse Wetenschapsagenda, or the, the Flemish Science Agenda. They will, will also uh, organize a wide survey for, of citizens and stakeholders. And this is the question that you will get. Uh, which question do you want science in Flanders to answer? Uh, this is how uh, they are going to organize it. So um, the, the capturing of the questions, the opening of the question uh, will start, uh, it's not really a question, it's this one question that you have to answer, <laughs> will start uh, in, uh, in next month, uh, in the 17th of April, so after the Easter holidays, uh, for six weeks. And then in June, July, uh, experts will cluster the questions, and in the autumn, there will be nights of science where there will be discussions about the questions. And already in December, there will be a closing event and a final report uh, on this Flemish science agenda. We as FLIS, as Flanders Marine Institute, would of course uh, highly promote that marine science questions are captured as much as possible in this, uh, in this first uh, block of the timeline. And uh, that's why we, we need you, uh, you all, received these uh, uh, post-it notes uh, that were stick, uh, stuck at the, at the back of your, uh, of your abstract book. I now invite you to take, let's say, uh, three minutes uh, of time and to discuss with, you, with your neighbor on uh, questions uh, that could answer this. Which question do you want science in Flanders to answer? Write them on these on this post-it notes. And Given the setting and the scene of today, it would be nice if there would be some uh, marine inspiration in your, in your questions. So um, I'll give you a, a minute or three. Please do engage with your neighbors. You, you will have an uh, interesting uh, change of ideas. And then jot them down on the, the post notes.